So, uh, okay, good, uh, good afternoon, afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We uh, want, want to continue, continue our class on the impact, impact of engineering in society. society. And, and today, today we're going to be talking, talking about emerging technologies, how they have impacted our way of life. <clears throat> now, let's see who is who in the world of science and technology. Uh, number one thing that here I want to mention as to do is the person that invented the World Wide Web. World Wide Web is a platform where you have all your social media platforms, that's why you have your Facebook, that's why you have your Twitter, that's why you have your Google, and a few other things. So this was invented in 1995 by one man, a British computer scientist called Tim Berners-Lee. Tim Berners-Lee was the inventor of the World Wide Web, and this was done in 1995. Now, another uh, one that is very important uh, also in the world of the internet has to do with the transport protocol that we normally use. Uh, anything we are doing on the internet, take for example now that you want to Google anything in Google, you open your Google and just press a keyword for a request. Once you press that enter button, there is a transport vehicle that will transport your request to the server where that answer is going to be fetched. That protocol that is enabling that is referred to as a CCPIP which is a short for Transport Control Protocol or Transfer Control Protocol through Internet Protocol. So that particular protocol, TCP IP, was invented by Bint Kaff and Bob Kahn in January 1983. Then Facebook and other social media platforms played key roles in networking people socially. And therefore, and, uh, and therefore, other related websites are referred to as social networking sites. Social networking sites, example of uh, social networking sites are Facebook, LinkedIn, and uh, Instagram, and a few others. So, a number of uh them also are listed here. We have the Facebook. We have the YouTube, we have WhatsApp, and a good number of them. And when you look at this, you would agree with me that these technologies were funded differently with different functionalities and at different times. So, but when you consider Facebook, Facebook has attracted over 2 billion population. That's about a third of the world population. Facebook is putting about a third of the world population, yeah. and you agree with me today that Facebook is also impacting the way we do our things. Most of us today will spend like one hour, two hours on a daily basis uh, on Facebook activities. And that's why you find that that technology has apparently changed the way you spend your time daily. So, and who was the founder? Was a man called Mark Zuckerberg. Is there? You must know the spelling of this name of these names, all these names I'm going to be telling you today, you need to know the spellings. Uh, because ah. if you are asked to spell or to put in Mark Zuckerberg, and you now put Mark Zuckerberg without putting the G, it's a zero. So he invented Facebook in February 2004. <laughs> and another one like it is YouTube. We're all used to YouTube. YouTube is a platform where we get videos for many things, where we get our movies and things like that. So it has attracted about 1.9 billion users since its invention, since the invention in 1985, sorry, 2005. YouTube was invented in February 2005 by two friends, I mean by three friends, Karim. George Karim, Steve Chen, and Chad Holly. And it has attracted about 1.9 billion users. Same goes for WhatsApp. That's also attracted about 1.5 billion users, which was invented also in February 2009. And I was asking the question, why is it that this very early in the year people invent a number of, or, or a number of these things that were invented, they apparently came in, in early in the year. So that means that you must not waste your time, especially as you are getting into the new year, ensure that you do something significant for yourself, for your society, and for your country. So, um, WhatsApp was invented February 2009 by Brian Acton and Jan Cohn. And it has pulled about 1.5 billion users. 
Same goes for Messenger. Messenger has put about 1.3 billion uh, users. The Messenger we're talking about here is Facebook Messenger. Is that it was invented in August 2011. And then another company in China called Tencent Incorporation invented WeChat in January 2011. Most of the uh, most of the most of some of these um, inventions that came out of United States developed countries. These emerging economies in China, uh, India, and few other places have invented their own parallel technologies as well. So WeChat is from India, was invented by Tencent Incorporation in India, and it has attracted about 1 billion users. Now the question now is to us all Nigerians, what are we waiting for? Why can't we begin <laughs> to think of what we can do as well for our country, for our continent, for our community, for our societies? We can also do it. These people did not bring it from heaven. They got to this world and due to their thinking faculty, they were like, wait a minute, we can provide a solution to this, our, our society. We can provide solution to our challenges in our community. So this is how they came about all of these things. So we, you, as a person, as you are just starting your education law now, you can also achieve it. Begin to think about what you can do, how you can impact your world. So Instagram also has attracted about 1 billion users. We all post our pictures today to Instagram. We rush to Instagram to go and post our pictures and things like that. Somebody worked on that. And that person well, invented like it in October 2010 by two people, actually. Kevin Syrum and Mike Krieger. They invented Instagram in 2010, October. TikTok also, I've never, I've, I've been to TikTok once, but I ran out because I couldn't bear <laughs> what was going on there. So some people will still like it. It has attracted about 500 million users in 2016, September, when it was invented. And it was invented by ByteDance. By, Twitter by also, dance. it's a very fantastic um, application. Uh, imagine technology, social media te technology, which is also impacting our world. It was invented in March 2006 by Jack Dorsey and a few others. Well, the, you know, one, most times people talk about Jack Dorsey as the Twitter, as the inventor who started uh, Twitter. So all of these things from this page alone, I can generate more than 10 questions for you. So ah. ensure that word by word, you master everything on this page. Ah. Ah. Do not put the inventor of TikTok on Twitter. If you do that, you will not be getting it right. So, uh, because at the end of the day, the question is going to come in form of multiple choice, I think. It's not going to be objective. So once you have that, you have to put, you know, fill the space appropriately as expected. So we are also have another one here, LinkedIn. LinkedIn, it's an academic website where people of, uh, you know, like minds meet. They talk about their profession, what they do, and things like that. It was invented in March 5, 2003 by Ray Hoffman. And uh, it has attracted about 294 million users. <laughs> Another one is Telegram, where that was the platform where I communicated you now that you guys should quickly meet me. And today we are all beneficiaries of uh, that particular emerging technology, which is impacting <laughs> the popular things today. So it has attracted over 200 million users. And it was invented yeah, in my time, really don't it. Ah. long eight years ago. Facebook and why did they invent it? I think it was because Mark. of the challenges of uh, uh, WhatsApp. Uh, 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 the challenges of WhatsApp, Yo, which uh, came earlier. WhatsApp has a number of limitations. One of the limitations has to do with um, uh, that the limit to the amount of people you can gather. WhatsApp has a maximum of 25 to 56 people. But with Telegram, you can have about 5,000 people. I mean, more than 5,000. I've witnessed over 250,000. Yes, I think. WhatsApp can accommodate that. I mean, sorry, Telegram can accommodate over 250,000 people, participants within that cluster. And to date, it has attracted 200 million users. And it was invented by two brothers. Two brothers, Nikola Durov and Pavel Durov. They were actually two brothers of the same family. So that name you are looking at, that there are two names, Nikola Durov. Durov was wow, the third name. And then the oh, other one is Pavel Durov. You and your brothers, are you working together? Are you not fighting? Are you not doing a, what we call a, a sibling rivalry? You know? 
the Yimbos, they don't need to say this. Now, can you? Whether they put their resources to, them, to see how best they, they can impact their world eh? in society. So you, we have no, to no. learn the same as well. If you have been fighting with your siblings, ensure when that you fight with them. Maybe you can sing together. Maybe you can yeah. invent a number of things together. Be so this one, we, have, we have seen an example here now <coughs> by these people that yeah. invented Telegram. The another one is the giant of them all, Google. Google has attracted 4 billion users since inception in 1998. In fact, Google came ahead of all those uh, technologies I have mentioned. It started in 1998 by two guys on their... I think they were working on their PhDs when they discovered the thing. And they never saw the end of their pitch. So what is the essence? Because they have discovered so many things. They have seen it. It was more or less like Kurika. I have found it. So they have found what they were looking for. And today, everybody, everyone, more than half of the total generation of the world are using Google. Why? Because Google is right there for you. It's the messenger that you can send to go and look for something for you. And it will bring, pull it down for you. Ask Google how to make money. Google will give you so many thousands, only hundreds and billions of uh, responses. Yeah. Another me. one that is uh, like him is, um, Yahoo, which was uh, email, which provided email facilities. Well. Yahoo has attracted 225 million users and it started in 1994. And it was invented Tell by me. two guys, Jerry Young and David Philo. I think this is a challenge to our ladies. I couldn't see any lady being involved in some of these inventions. Not and so. I think what a man can do, a woman can do also, even maybe much more. So this is a challenge to our ladies to begin to think of what they can do. You know? want to party, what is, so that, that is that. Plan. Now, other ways of the internet, the use of internet, social media, and voting. The internet can be used to campaign for support during elections. Internet can be used as a tool to gather support during elections. In fact, you agree with me that in two, for two, election 2023 now, which is still ahead of us, people have started campaigning. Somebody who is thinking of becoming the pre presidential aspirant representing Yoruba land is already talking about it over the internet. So the internet can be used as a tool for campaign. So, and it can also be used as a tool to affect turnout for events and voting outcomes. Take, for example, the NSAS event. And the NSAS event was used to, it was a tool that was used to organize the protest and the subsidy. So, the internet has been used as a tool also to facilitate protest, like I said, and to harness resources. To our next resources. Take for example, there was a time that we call this thing Arab Spring. Arab Spring was when a number of the leaders in this northern African country and some other African countries were wrestling like that. They were going to have 20 years, 30 years, 32 years, and much more. For example, Mobutu Sesako was reigning for 32 years and he was still in city, was not going to go. Mugabe at the same time was also saying that he was not going to go, he still needed to do some more. And even this man in Libya, what um, yeah, Muammar Gaddafi was also not going to go. But through the Arab Spring conducted over the internet, people rallied around, they conducted protests, demonstrations, and things like at the end of the day, like they ended the reign, the regime of the people. So that is talking about the power of the internet. The internet through social media can also be used for crowdfunding. Crowdfunding. When we say crowdfunding, what do we mean? When you use crowd to contribute, meaning that when you gather money through crowd, when you use crowd to gather money, look at the example of a lady that uh, was at the NSAS protest. During the NSAS protest, she was there on the, on his on on, on his, uh, physically challenged. She was working on uh, uh, using walking stick to. Uh, to, to, you know, to support herself for the other leg because she has lost the other leg. No, and then here and there, the people the who are just decide to say where well, they mean, let us gather money for this girl so that at least can have some money to buy a protective leg. 
to buy a con So they initially planned to gather about 600 or 800,000 naira at the end of the day. The internet was used to crowdfund a prosthetic leg. And they even got more over 2 million naira. So the social media, there's also a place where we call GoFund. GoFund has been used also to gather money for people that are sick on the internet. To gather money for people that are having one challenge or another from different places without any geographical barrier, without any any limitation. They use the internet. Internet was used as a platform for them to impact the life of people to actually gather money for. Then it has also been used as digital censorship, where governments have used this to monitor or telegraph their citizens who may be critic to their regime. You know, most of the people, uh, some to be uh, a number of our leaders, they are dictators. Yeah. And at the, the, the moment they're and not doing well, it is only everybody that can keep quiet. Some people just want to talk about what they're doing to decide what they're doing. But government have been noted to have used the internet to censor the lives of people, to monitor them online, to teleguide them, to know where they're going to do what they're doing. So also for yourself as well. Yourself, we have uploaded a number of your photos online. The number of people who upload their photos even when they are traveling, they tell you, oh, I'm in Dubai now, I'm in Dubai I'm in Dubai now. So in that case, it can also be used to do digital censorship. Then the internet also has to be used for cyber crime activity. It has been noted to have been used for cyber crime activity. I'm sure we all know Oshkopi. Oshkopi was one of our, in Nigeria, who is even one of the notorious networking, uh, internet crime guys.